Okay, we are live. Well, thank you everyone for coming. This is Cutting the Cord, in case you got lost and just decided to sit down with a random group of people. Um, I'm going to be going over all of the different options you have um, as alternatives to cable, ways of maybe reducing the cable package you already have. Uh, there are a lot of alternatives out there. There are really comes down to two options though, uh, an antenna or streaming. You probably heard streaming. It's a pretty ubiquitous phrase, um, and it, it encompasses a lot of different things that I'll go over today. But essentially, when it, you boil it down, if you don't want to pay your cable bill anymore or, or you have to pay for a cable subscription uh, through Spectrum or whoever you're getting it from, Verizon, it really comes down to the two options. You can get an antenna. Yes, they still make them, and they work pretty well. Or you can stream things over the internet. So. Netflix, Amazon Prime, HBO, you've probably all heard of those before. Those are you're gonna be your other option. Or you can do both of them. So I'll start with um, antennas, since you're probably familiar with antennas. Um, so I don't know if the last time you used an antenna, you probably had like the rabbit ears or something. Those no longer work. So a few years ago, the FCC ruled they're getting rid of all analog uh, airwaves for, uh, so there's no more analog airwaves. You can't just stick a piece of copper in your TV and pick up channels anymore. It's all digital. So you need to get a digital antenna. Sounds fancy. It's basically the same thing. They're not expensive. You can get some as cheap as $10. The most expensive cheap, uh, digital antenna I've found is about $150. Um, the differences between all of those are the range, how far it can reach, and um, whether or not it can be mounted outside or not, if it's weatherproof or not. That's basically the two most important factors when you're choosing your antenna. Um, if you are going to get an indoor one or an outdoor one or wherever you're planning on getting one, make sure it's at least 60 miles. Most of them are rated for 60 miles. Um, the reason I say that is within 60 miles, that's gonna be where you have your strongest signal. Anything outside of 60 miles, you the it starts to degrade quite a bit. So within 60 miles, you're gonna, you should have a pretty great reception. Outside of that, it might get a little bit worse and worse. So um, at least 60 miles to get all the best channels you can get. Outdoor antennas are generally rated about 150 miles. So if you get an outdoor antenna, you should be good. Um, indoor antennas, they range uh, in quality, they range in range <laughs> and everything. So just, uh, make sure you consider you know that when you're purchasing it okay so what the website i have up right now is the fcc's uh digital television reception maps so this will give you a rough idea of the channels you can get based on your zip code so if i type in save the zip code here now it'll say what what the fcc considers strong is within 20 miles that's really overkill. I mean, if you put an antenna up, anything within 60 miles, you'll get a, you should get a good signal. So um, in, in the case of this website, anything in green or yellow, you should pick up absolutely fine. Uh, that includes CBS, Fox, PBS, ABC, CW, ETV, MyTV, Telemundo, Univision, ION, and a bunch of other ones I've never heard of. So all the major channels, you know, your, your basic cable, you're gonna get fine. Um, NBC is like 55 miles, it's like right on the cusp, but you should, again, you should get it fine. Everything else, CBS, there's two CBSs within 25 miles of here. So CBS, if you like watching, I don't know, what's on CBS, Late Show? I don't even know. But if you like CBS, you're totally fine. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. So again, this is just, the, this is the FCC, this is the, the government's website. Um, Antennas Direct, they manufacture antennas, They're, they've been around for a long, long time, they make quality antennas. They also have a map on their website that I think is actually better than the FCC's and it tells you to uh, 0.01 miles the distance. Um, it also tells you in which direction they're, they're from, like a degree. So uh, if you don't have an omnidirectional antenna, one that can pick up signals from all directions, if you have a unidirectional one, this will help you kind of figure out exactly where you, where you should place it to get the best signal. So this is a really great website and According to Antennas Direct, there are, 
probably dozens, if not over well over a hundred channels within like 60, 68 miles. So um, again, this is kind of a best case scenario. Everyone's different. Um, antennas, your signal strength depends on you know, your elevation, sur your surroundings. So if you live near uh, big buildings or something that's blocking your signal, that could reduce your signal. Um, basically anything can block it. Trees can block it, bad weather can block it, um, all kinds of stuff. So if you live at the top of a hill and there's nothing around you for miles, you'll get a great reception. Um, you know, if you live in a congested city, it might not be so good, but um, you know, the people who sell antennas realize this, so just hold on to your receipt. If you plug in your antenna and you're not satisfied with it, um, they'll take it back. They, they understand it's different house to house. So and this, you know, if you want to pursue the antenna, I definitely recommend doing it. I mean, it's a one-time purchase. Again, you can get them as cheap as $10. The most expensive one is $150. I had a patron tell me he, he purchased that one and he told me he got like 150 channels and they all come in great. It's an outdoor amplified digital antenna. It's the best of the best you can buy. It's called, um, I have it here. It's called the Antop Big Boy. And he mounted it on his uh, on the top of his chimney, ran a wire in, hooked it up to his TV. It also has power, so it's an amplified antenna. It gets a little bit stronger signal. And again, he got a, about 150 channels. If, you know, if it, you know, it was a stormy day, it might go down to like 120 or something, but that's pretty good. That's What was the name of it again? Antop, A-N-T-O-P. Oh, okay. I'm looking at stuff. Okay. And that's, then you don't pay any money. That's it. So essentially how it works, regardless of the antenna you get, it has a little coaxial cable, you screw it into the back of your TV, you go into your settings of your TV, or menu, hit menu, channel, channel scan, and then it will go wavelength by wavelength and pick up as many channels as it can. When it finishes the scan, it usually takes about two or three minutes, it'll say, okay, you have 60 channels, or okay, here's your 80 channels or so. And that's it. You're done. So um, you go and you get this antenna, I guess, at Best Buy. Yep, Amazon, and then, you get an antenna. Um, but you shouldn't disconnect your cable yet to make sure that it works. I would definitely would that interfere yeah. with the with the cable uh, files or Optima interfere with the digital it antenna. Won't, no, I well first I definitely recommend trying the antenna yeah. before you cut the cord. Yeah, cut the cord because um, yeah. you might not be satisfied with the channels. But it won't interfere with it, so you can see. No, so works. the way your cable box connects to your television is a different cord so it won't right. it won't interfere okay. um, that being said if you are satisfied with your antenna you can use your existing uh, cable lines that are run through your house for your antenna so one thing you can do I, I know I, I know people who have done this is they'll have an outdoor antenna or one in their attic say and they'll connect it to the cable lines that are run throughout their house and then all of a sudden, their antenna is now powering all the TVs in their house, that one antenna. So the same way your, your cable feed is coming in from the cable company into your house, you can use their lines that they've run, well, your electrician ran, for the antenna to send the signal out throughout your house. So, um, so yeah, sorry, they didn't... You don't need an electrician. No, you, you don't. Uh, really? So, it depends. Well, it, you shouldn't. You should. You, you don't for the, the minimal amount of work. So if you want to get an indoor antenna, like for instance, one that looks like this, this is the Channel Masters. They're another popular brand. Um, all the, uh, the indoor antennas or most of the indoor antennas will look like just a flat piece of paper, basically. And that's really what it is. It's just a black adhesive, usually um, mesh of metal that and you can just stick it in your window. It has one cord coming out of it that screws into the back of your TV. Then you run the channel scan, like I said, and that's it. No electrician required. You can do it, I promise you. You don't have to get your, whoever the techie is in, in your family to come over. It's, it couldn't be simpler. Um, it it gets, starts to get complicated when you want to have one antenna powering multiple televisions. Yes, that's what I knew, yeah. That's, yeah, so in, in that case, I would recommend, you still don't require an electrician for this, but if that's what you feel comfortable doing, um, just mm -hmm. so they can do this, you know, 
you might, they might have to splice the wires and have them going in multiple directions, but that depends on the wiring of your house. Right. But if you're doing something simple like just having an indoor antenna connected for each television, that doesn't require an electrician or even tech savviness. It's just, you don't even need power for most of them. It's just stick it in your window, screw it in. Yeah? If you decide to do this, like when you get, I have uh, optimum cable now, and the TV guide lists the, let's say, Fox is channel five. Mm -hmm. Once you get the antenna, they give you a, a Paramount is channel 134, and they give you a listing, you're supposed to go through this every day, find out where the hell you are. So once you do the, that's a good question. Once you do that channel scan that I mentioned yeah. earlier, it will tell you which channel is which. So it'll right. say Fox is channel five. It'll. But you have to do that every single. I mean, I go no, no, to the TV guide and look, and I don't have to look this up every time I want to switch channels. So there won't be a TV. You won't have a guide anymore. That's the that's the that's the cable service that provides the guide. Um, so you'll have to. You'll have to do channel up and channel down and, and memorize, I guess, or write down what channel is which. But you don't have to do the scan every time. You do the scan once. There's no DVR, so you can't, you can't copy. Oh, yeah, that's your question. Uh, not, so the antennas don't have a DVR function. You can buy DVRs separate. Um, I know Walmart sells one for like 80 bucks. You can probably get one on Amazon for about the same price or cheaper. And then it works the same way as your cable, um, but it's just getting its feed from an antenna. Are you, gonna, are you gonna be able to pick up Fox News and Fox Business and all those? No, those won't, those aren't within the 60 mile range, right. So. That's the streaming service. Correct. So, like, so yeah, that's a good way to think of it. So the antennas are really gonna get your local channels and the basic cable. If that's what you're happy with, then the antenna's for you, because you're done. You bought your, $50 antenna and you're good for life. If you want Fox News, if you want Comedy Central, if you want CNN, if you want anything basically above basic cable, you need to start exploring some streaming services. And there are a lot of streaming services out there. Um, most of the streaming services out there overlap with their services. So um, it can get kind of confusing, um, which is why I made the chart for you. Um, on the, let me pull it up here. After the first page, this kind of grid shape, this like Excel spreadsheet is what it is. Um, this has the most popular streaming services that offer live television on the top. And then these are all of the channels in alphabetical order. There's five pages of them. And the little X indicates if that streaming service has that channel. So you, you mentioned Fox News, I'll look them up. That's a popular one. I'm sure most of them have that. So Fox News is available on Fubo, YouTube, Sling, Hulu, all of them except Philo. So if, if you absolutely need Fox News, I would get one of the ones that had the little X marks next, mark, uh, next to it. So um, do you know about NHK, which is the WS, um, station? NHK. It's New York based. Um, is it public access? Because they, you would get any public access channel, unless it's a private. If it's based out of New York, my, my you should get. My used to pick it up with their um, indoor antenna. Um, you should. If it's out of New York City, you'll pick it up. Um, NHK. I don't see NHK listed here, but. That doesn't mean you, you might you wouldn't get it. So you might. Well, this is a great list. This is great. Good. So those are just the streaming services that have live television. If you need live TV, like you need your Fox News, you need your whatever CNN, Comedy Central, sports. If you need live TV, those five or six services I have on that list offer live television the same way you would on your cable box. Um, so, and again, you have to buy a separate DVR if you want to. No. Oh. So, okay. many of these streaming services, if not all of them at this point, have DVR built into the service. Mm -hmm. So, it's not saving the DVR to a physical box it's the in your living room, it's in the cloud. Exactly. So, for instance, uh, YouTube TV. That's one I'm, I'm 
more familiar with. That's on that list there. So YouTube TV is a streaming service. I think it's, I have the price here, I'll look it up. Um, anyway, you pay a monthly rate and you get, I think like 90 or 100 channels or something. Um, it's all the most popular channels, so you're not getting like tons of junk channels you'll never watch, like you probably are paying for already. Um, but it comes with unlimited, unlimited DVR, um, and it can cover up to three or four televisions. So you're paying, let's, I don't know, what the, I'll look up what the price is, but say it's $70 a month. That's $70 for four TVs, you're not paying per box, it's just the flat 70, and it has unlimited DVR. Um, so, shows at a time or something like that? Well, uh, with, so yeah, exactly. So four TVs would be able to be logged into YouTube TV at the, simultaneously. Um, some of them are two, some are three TVs. It depends on the service. Um, I know YouTube, I use YouTube as an example because they kind of cover as much as they possibly can. They're on the more expensive side, but they have the most services. Um, so before I get ahead of myself, uh, I'm, I am getting ahead of myself already. So when we talk about streaming, um, you're, you still need internet, which means you are you haven't technically cut the cord. You just got rid of cable, part of your cable subscription. So um, me speaking from my own personal experience, um, at my setup at my house, I just have internet from the cable company. Uh, I pay about $30, $35 a month for high-speed internet like really, really fast internet. Like I need good internet, so I pay a little bit higher than I, the minimum for good internet. And I do everything else as streaming. So whether you have, I don't know, Spectrum, Optimum, Verizon, whatever it is, they have an internet only uh, package. They probably don't advertise it as much as like the packages that have phone and all the cable channels and everything because they know streaming is, is eating into their profits and they don't want to advertise it because they'll lose more customers. So, uh, but they do offer it. Um, you might have to do a little digging or get on the phone, but um, they do offer it. Um, I know they can, they're as little as $20 a month. They can go up to probably $100 a month if you need like gigabit internet like the library has, but that's super overkill. You definitely don't, do not need that. Um, I have 300 megabyte internet. That's, that is overkill for my house, but I would rather have much more than I need than not enough. Um, the general rule of thumb, I would say, is about 20 megabytes per device that is connecting to the internet. Um, net, when you're streaming Netflix, for instance, they say it's about 10 megabytes speed to stream a show. Probably a little bit more. They're probably you know overselling it, but. Um, We'll, we'll just say 20 to be safe. So if you have four TVs in your house and four laptops and all of them are going at once, you're gonna need about 200 megabytes, right? Or, or more, so the more the better. Um, but I think after like that initial $20 a month, at least I have Spectrum, so I can't speak for Verizon, but they're very competitive. There's only they're always trying to undercut themselves on price. You said you had 300 and some with uh, like 35 dollars? I think I have to double check, but I think that's yeah. just about right, yeah. So, um, right, so the $20 a month is about probably like 40 or 50 megabytes, but then the next step up is like 25, 30 dollars a month, and it jumps up to like 200 megabytes. So I, I recommend for like that extra five, ten dollars whatever it is, getting the 200 megabytes, just so if you're going streaming everything, you want it to work. You don't want to be frustrated when your live TV is coming in choppy or yeah. lagging or whatever. So 200 should cover it. So that's the first thing. You need. You still need internet, so you're still in bed with the cable companies, but at least you're only paying for internet. You're not paying for all these junk and you, cable you companies. Your phone, you just have your, you basically have, you have, you use your uh, cell phone, right? Uh, so I can stream, you can stream on anything. Anything that connects to the internet, you can stream to. Anything that has connects to the internet and has a screen, you can stream to these days. So uh, I have a TV that I stream to, I have my iPad I stream to, my wife and I have phones that we stream to, um, and we're probably gonna get another TV for Black Friday, so we'll have two TVs that we can stream to. Um, now, you have your internet, right, from the cable company. Now, these are just some side tips that I wanna share with you. The cable company is going to want 
to rent to you or have you rent from them a modem and a router. Those are the two components you need for Wi-Fi in your house. You don't have to rent them from them. You don't, they'll, they might say you do, but you absolutely do not. You can buy a modem for about $100 and it'll pay for itself within the first year. Um, routers come, and they, routers are the most widest spectrum of prices. You can get a, the cheapest of the cheap routers to the best of the best routers. So you can kind of find where you want. You can get a decent router for about 50, 60 bucks. A great router starts at about 100 bucks, but it, it's a one-time purchase. Um, if you aren't familiar with setting them up, uh, the cable company is not gonna set up your stuff. They'll set up their stuff, they're not gonna set up your stuff. So this is where it starts, the tech side of it starts, this is like a, a, a the first barrier of entry basically for streaming. So setting up a router and a modem is not as complicated as it may sound. The modem essentially just needs power and the coax from the wall, right? The router is the part that gives you Wi-Fi in your house. That connects to the modem via an ethernet cord. It's the little cord that has a little spring top on it. Um, Basically, it the router might take a few more steps to set up, but it comes with an instruction manual. If you read it, it will set it. You can set it up. I promise you. They've made these. It's not like it was 30 years ago where you needed like an IT certification to set up these things. They've made them as idiot-proof as possible. So the current, um, if you have established uh, service with, let's like, say, BIOS for the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. The modem and the router are in one? They do make combos, and that might be what you're renting from. Yeah, they're separate things. Yeah, so they do make, um, the cable companies will have the modem and the router as one box sometimes now. I know um, my parents-in-law have uh, the Altice. You might have seen the commercials for it. That's, they're just lumping everything together now to make it harder for you to do it yourself. So that's, uh, yeah, essentially you would be replacing that one box with, a modem and a router. Because mm -hmm. um, as, as far as I know, they don't sell those combos commercially. That's something that like the cable company has developed. And when you say you plug in the ethernet in the back, what do you mm -hmm. plug in the other end to? You're, the ethernet is connecting the modem, which is getting the raw cable right. feed mm -hmm. and converting it to internet. Mm -hmm. And then the ethernet is going from that to the router, which is giving you Wi-Fi and, and usable internet. I'm just trying to picture what, what's plugged into what. Okay, so the modem, that's the first bit, right? That's what the cable that comes out of your wall mm -hmm. goes into, Right. the modem. The router is what gives you Wi-Fi. That connects to the modem. So it goes raw cable, modem, router in that line. Okay, and router doesn't plug into anything else. It, only it just needs power modem. and connect and the connection to the modem. So okay. we'll plug into the wall too. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I had a Verizon rep tell me when I signed up for Verizon the last time. He said, wait six months and then call them up, tell me you want to buy the modem. He said, now it's considered a used modem and they cut the price quite a bit. You can buy it right from, from, from them. That's, interesting. that's I didn't know that. That's That's a good option. So I would definitely recommend doing that instead of Going out and setting that yeah, yourself, you but it's already right set up. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing that. I didn't know that. Um, so one thing, uh, just bridging off what you said, I want to mention before we get really deep in the streaming stuff. If you are happy with your cable service, but you aren't happy with the price, you can negotiate with them. It's a hassle, but they they know streaming services are eating away at their customer base, and they are definitely afraid of losing you. I guarantee you, if you call them and complain about your bill, they'll knock probably 10% off just to keep you happy. Um, if you really put up a stink and say, I just want to switch to internet, I'm done with cable, whatever, and then just hang up on them, like, you know, solid, like say like set a date for, I want my cancellation of service, then hang up, they'll call you back within a week, a retention specialist is what they're called. Their, their only job is to get you to come back and they'll offer you an even deeper discount. I get there's a whole industry around getting cable customers back to cable companies. Yeah. There, I tell, I, I guarantee you, if the more stink you put up, 
the better discount you're going to get. It's such a hassle and it's a shame that it's come to this, but it's what it is. Um, so I just wanted to point that out before we got really deep into the streaming services and you all commit to buying a Chromecast and Netflix and all these things. Um, so if you're happy with your current service and you just want a discount, call them up and complain. They'll, they'll knock at least 10% off for you, if not more. Uh, on the more extreme end, I know people who switch back and forth between Verizon and Spectrum every year or every two years, whenever their contract's up. That's a, that's, again, it's a hassle, but it's, you get. Actually, my garage has both all the equipment for both companies in the garage. So they don't even bother picking it up anymore. It's just there so for the next time. Comes, he goes, oh, this is going to be easy. <laughs> so you're not the only person who does that. A lot of people do that. Yeah. Uh, because after your initial contract is over, then they jack up your price, yeah. um, and then you can just say, "No, I don't want to. I don't want to pay that. I'm going to go to the other guys because they're offering me a better deal." And you can just go back and forth forever and ever and ever, and they'll never say, "Wait a minute, you were here two years ago." They'll say, "Thank you for coming back. Here's this great discount." So that's yeah, another they, option. They put you on a promo. Exactly the promo. Yeah. And they're they're just hoping that you're not going to put up a fight. That's all it is. They're hoping that after two years, you just say. Oh, whatever, it went up $50. I'm just not, you know, it's too much of a hassle to call. It's it's a shame, but that's really what it is. If there's one thing you can take from this class, it's put up, just call them and put up a stink, and it'll, you'll, your life will be better afterwards. So uh, you were saying before about uh, megabytes? Yeah. Okay. How many megabytes, if you, when you, you still have cable, like I have Fios, mm -hmm. how many megabytes does Fios give you? Depends on what you're paying for. Um, I I can't. Yeah, I don't know. It'll probably say in your bill. Yeah. Yeah. It. I don't. Yeah. It would say in your bill what you're paying for so under you inter could your also internet. decrease that from your bill. Yeah, that would help decrease it. Yeah. Um, the packages are, are tough because sometimes you're like locked into a certain package which has well, certain packages. internet. It, if you're on, a, if you're in a package, if you're not in a package, like. For me, I'm not in a package. I only have internet. I can go, I can increase my speed and decrease my speed month by month if I want. But once you're usually in a package, you're kind of like locked into what that package is. And that package might be, you have 200 megabit internet and these channels. And that's your package. And then if you change one thing, you gotta change everything. Yeah. And also the movie channels, like HBO has its own price. And that. Right. Yeah, because I have Netflix too. And then I'll watch, I'll be watching something on Netflix, and then all of a sudden it'll, it'll just turn off and say that my bandwidth is not enough. Yeah. Um, so the, the bandwidth is essentially that that speed, the mega, megabytes. So it might be that you, it could be a couple of things, but it's probably that either you, you're not paying for a high enough high tier enough. of okay. speed. So, yeah, so internet's tough. There can be a lot of things that can go not wrong, but there are a lot of things that affect your signal strength. You, how far away you are from your the router that gives you Wi-Fi, that's the biggest factor, really. The closer you are, the better signal you're gonna get, just like an antenna. Um, if uh, I know Wi-Fi signals can get dampened going through kitchens or stone, things like that really dampen the signal. So there's a lot of factors with your signal strength. Um, so if it's possible, you could move closer to the router or move the router closer to your TV, that might help with the signal. Well, they installed it. They, they yeah. come and install the router, so they have installed it in the bedroom, which I guess it's convenient for them because it's near a window, and the TV is all the way on the other end of the house. Yeah. So that you can fix that issue a couple of different ways. Do, do you have cable coming in anywhere else in your house, like the one that you screw in? No, we just have it. Just that one location? Bedroom. Okay. Uh, so the, the first way to change that, oh, the first thing you could do, if it's not in your situation, is you can move the modem or your modem router combo to anywhere where you have that cable connection that comes out of the wall. So that can help if, if you move it to the, somewhere it's in the middle of your house, that'll have the best coverage all around. Mm -hmm. um, another thing you can do is get what's called a Wi-Fi extender. Oh, I have that in the kitchen. Um, kitchen it's, it works okay. It's a, it doesn't increase your signal strength, it repeats whatever signal it can pick up. And so that's a common misconception that, you know, it's usually advertised as boosting your signal, but it just rebroadcasts whatever signal it can find. So um, that's another option. 
the really the only or the best way to increase your signal strength around your house with Wi-Fi is to um, physically connect those Wi-Fi extenders, meaning running an Ethernet wire between them. Uh, that way, instead of it rebroadcasting whatever signal strength it can get wirelessly, it's rebroadcasting at full strength because it's hardwired to um, to the other router. That you would have to probably get um, an electrician involved. It's not difficult, so it's not like they're going to be there all day. They just need to run a wire. They probably can just pop it into your basement, run it to the other side of your house, and pop it up, and done. It might be done in an hour. But uh, I, had to, I, I had that problem, and what I did is I, I spent some money and I got myself a black hole. You know, uh, next, yeah. next year it was two hundred twenty-five dollars. I my, yeah, no problem. With it. So th what he did is just get a better router yeah. or the best router. <laughs> yeah. Um, so again, like what I said with routers, that you can get a cheap one or you can get a really, really expensive one and, and price matters. I mean, you get what you pay for. So the ones that come from the cable company are generally not the best, um, but the Nighthawk, the one this gentleman purchased is $250 and it's like top, top of the line. So I'm sure that thing covers. Yeah, you don't have a problem. Yeah. So again, you get what you pay for. With, uh, so you can with connect routers. that router into FiOS if you use that router. Do you do you have a combo or do you have? I have a combo. You have a combo. Maybe, maybe I would. Uh, see, the, that's the problem with the combos because you can't. They're not customizable. They're meant to just be a self-contained unit. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'd have to do some research. Um, if you want to write down your email or something, I can get back to you on that. I need to do a little more digging. Yeah, there might be a way you can disable the router in the combo and then connect your own router. Or you could just be able to connect another router and then it just does its thing on its own as if your combo wasn't a combo, it was just a modem. But I need to do a little more, a little more research. Um, because Verizon probably doesn't want you doing that, so they probably they might lock you out of doing it. I don't know. Excuse me. Okay, good questions. Yes. Before you go on, the antenna, you can adjust for the TV. You said you can put some, that, that silver thing in the window or whatever. Correct. Now the streaming, you get a new television screen. Okay. I have Cablevision, that's the key. The basic computer, because I'm not a whiz, I just had email. My t regular phone, and now, if I want to just add the streaming, you know, do I have to get rid of the cable? Well, then what happens to my regular email and my regular phone in the kitchen? Um, it depends. Is cable? Can I buy just the streaming? Let's say, like, I want to keep cable for all my stuff, but now I want to get the new shows on on streaming. Can I get a streaming box? You can add streaming on top of what you're already doing. How do no I do problem. That? That's my. How do I do that? Do you have internet from? Cable vision? Cable yeah. That's internet? Yeah. yeah, smart TV. Do you know how much, what your speed is? Do you know what, what <laughs> I your speed is? Okay. I, I'm lucky, I know I don't know. All right, so that's that's so a good I question. Can I tell them I want to stream all these new? You don't have to tell them anything. You can just start doing it. If you already have internet, all you need is internet to start doing it. Okay. So let me, that, that's a good question and it goes nicely into what I'm about to get into. So, um, so this woman asked, how do you stream? What can you stream on? Correct. You can stream onto anything that has a screen and can connect to the internet. If your TV is a smart TV, which all it means is it connect to the, can connect to the internet, you, are already, you can already stream on that. You can stream on your, if you have a smartphone, you can stream on that. If you have an iPad or a Kindle phone, uh, not a Kindle, uh, like a Galaxy tablet or something, you can stream on that. Okay. Um, if you don't have a smart TV, you can make it smart by getting what's called a streaming device. And all that is, is a little box that you connect to the TV the same way your cable box connects. Like a Fire Stick, an Apple TV, a Chromecast, a Roku, there's dozens and dozens of these things. You just connect it to your TV, that device connects to the internet, and all of a sudden you can stream on your TV. You hear what did you do that to you? No. Yeah. So how, I don't, I'm saying. You just call, go to Amazon and ask for a Fire Stick. You just hook it into the back of your TV set. Well, there's a little play. It looks 
So Yeah. 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 The company that you the screening box company and driving. I'll get into all of that okay. right right now. Let's let's get back on track. Okay. Streaming devices. These devices connect to the internet and allow you to watch things like Netflix, Amazon Prime, HBO Max, all these wonderful streaming services. The one the most popular one you've probably heard of is called an Amazon Fire Stick. Um, it is my least favorite of all of them, but it's it works perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, it's favorite? I'll get to that. Okay. Uh, so it's black. You know, Black Friday started a week ago, so <laughs> you can get them for twenty five dollars on Amazon right now. Uh, I haven't tried them in a couple of years, so maybe they got better. I don't know. No, but, they're not good. Okay. Well, Amazon. It, this is probably the cheapest one you can get. Twenty five bucks. You stick a little stick in the back of your TV in the HDMI port, um, oh, which is. Uh, what port? It's HDMI. called HDMI. I'm trying to see if they have a better picture of it. It's mm -hmm. yeah. that where my finger's pointing. It looks like a little trapezoid, like a little silver rectangle. Mm -hmm. okay. All modern TVs have. If you have a flat screen TV, it, there's a 99% chance it's in the back of your TV somewhere, okay. or you have HDMI. multiple of them. You have to go to HDM1 or HDM2. Yep. That's where you put it in there. It's the same cord. I'm my computer's hooked up to this thing with. It's 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 very very common. I mean, is that a better picture? It's on the yeah. top there. Uh, anyways, they all connect the same way. It's with an HDMI cord. Um, so they all need power and HDMI into your TV. That's it. Um, they all work the same way. Again, this is the Fire Stick. They come with a little remote so you can you know, start jumping into Netflix or anything. Uh, Apple TV is another really popular one. If you jump into Netflix, you have to sign up. Hey, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll get to that. I just wanted to go over the uh, this first. Okay, so there's a lot of different options. There's the Fire Stick made by Amazon. Apple has theirs it's called an Apple TV. So if you're an Apple head and you have all Apple products, this might be a good option for you. Google makes one called the Google Chromecast. This is the one I have, and this is the best one in my opinion. <laughs> but uh, it's they all work the same way. It's HDMI into the back of your TV and power. And they come with a little remote. They're all they're all the same, um, and they're all on sale now <laughs> because it's getting close to the holidays. So, and finally is the Roku. You might have heard of Roku. Roku's been around forever, and they are they're still duking it out with the best of the best. So Roku's great. They're they're still relevant today because they're smart and they jumped on the streaming bandwagon quickly, and and they've kept up. So uh, they're solid devices, and they're. You know, very reasonably priced. They start at thirty dollars and go up to. It used to be fifty, but now it's on sale probably because of the holidays. Um, they're, you know, very functional. Again, they all connect the same way. They come with a little remote. Um, now I will say with. Um, oh, never mind. No, I'm thinking of something else. Okay, so those are the big four. I wouldn't get any that isn't in that I'm showing you right now. Um, these are the big ones. There's probably dozens of companies that can do this, um, but I would stick with the big four just for the sole reason that you know it's gonna be supported. It's by a reputable company. It's not gonna sell your information or whatever, might, but whatever. The, you know, they're gonna be solid devices. They're not gonna fail you. So Google, Apple, Amazon, or Roku. These are the top four, I'll stick with these. And again, you only need these if your TV isn't a smart TV. If your TV is a smart TV, your TV can connect to the internet already and you don't need these. Um, now, that being said, so these streaming devices offer features that smart TVs don't, additional features, but not essential features. They all, if all you do is connect to Netflix, your smart TV will do that and you don't need any of these devices, okay? So I have a subscription to Prime, I mm -hmm. have a Fire Stick, I yep. have a smart TV, 
you're good. I don't need all that, right? Do I have too much? If your smart TV has Amazon Prime already on it, then you don't no, need the buyer it stick. No, it comes. I don't, well, I don't think it changes it as I do. Yeah. Uh, oh, so smart TVs are, are every company um, is different. You know, Samsung might update their TVs for ten years, and you'll you know Sony might do different apps yeah. updated differently. So you know, generally speaking, smart TVs don't keep up uh, with the streaming devices. You know, in terms oh. of updates, as quite as long, and that's only because these streaming devices like they only do streaming. So they generally are updated longer and last a little bit longer. Where smart TVs, the streaming is kind of like an add-on. It's kind of like almost an afterthought. Um, but they work perfectly fine. So I'll give you an example. I have a Samsung smart TV. Um, my Samsung smart TV, for whatever reason, doesn't have an HBO app built in. So when I want to watch HBO, I use my streaming device to get HBO. Um, so. If it had HBO built into the TV, I wouldn't need my streaming device, but it doesn't, so that's what I use that for. So, um, of course, you have to pay HBO. Right. Right. So that's. You just don't plug in these devices and then poof, you get Netflix, Apple, Paramount, and Apple. Right. But you have to pay for You have to pay for every single one. Yeah, basically. So that's, that's what these charts are for. So on the first page, I list here. All of the most popular apps, um, at least when I made this, which was a couple of months ago. Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, I already noticed a flaw. So on the bottom where it says other streaming services, CBS All Access, that doesn't exist anymore. It's now called Paramount Plus. Right. Um, so Paramount Plus is basically CBS All Access plus movies now. So that's the only difference that I can see here. Um, but the, the most popular ones I'm sure you've heard of, Netflix, Amazon Prime, HBO, oh, that's called Max now, not now. That's another mistake, I'm sorry. Disney Plus and Apple TV Plus. So th those are the top five. Yeah, it's called HBO Max now, not now. Uh, that was a typo. Any, in any case, so most of these streaming services you do have to pay a monthly fee for. Um, so I know what you're saying, like, if I'm, I'm just paying these streaming services instead of my cable company. Yeah. That's only if you're paying for all of them. You probably don't need Netflix, Amazon Prime, HBO Max, Disney Plus, Apple TV, Friendly TV, CB, Paramount Plus, all of them. Acorn. Acorn. Like, <laughs> once you start adding up, like, eight or nine of them, yeah, then it starts to get up to your whatever you're paying for cable every month. Um, but, again, you, don't, you might not need all of them. A lot of them might have overlap. Some of them might not interest you at all. Um, the other thing with a lot of these streaming services is because you can log into multiple televisions per account, you can share your subscriptions with family members or friends. That's what I do. Like I, I have all of these, but I only pay for two of them. You know, I get one from my brother-in-law, I get one from my brother, I get one from my mom. Like, you know, we're all sharing each other's passwords and I'm giving out my accounts to them. So yeah. So, like Netflix, for instance, lets you log in, I think, with four TVs right. or something at once. Right. So, your one subscription of whatever, $10 a month, can four people can share that, essentially. So, you know, if you have a, if you have a family and people already subscribe to these and they're nice, they might share with you their login information and there you go. You don't have to pay for that one. So, that's, that's one nice thing. Um, so, again, if you're really trying to, like, Reduce what you're paying on, like your monthly, uh, you know, subscription or whatever your, your bills, keeping your bills low. You can get internet, and Netflix, Amazon Prime, and HBO, and all of that together. You might already have Amazon. Do you have Amazon Prime? Like, do you get free shipping yeah. and stuff? Yeah. So you already have Amazon Prime. You're already getting it with yeah. your free shipping. I have Amazon and Netflix, and I share Hulu. There you go. So, I mean, I can't think of anything worth watching out other than. You know, watching like The Mandalorian or something on Disney Plus, you're pretty much already covered. So you might just need to get maybe a little bit faster internet, cut the cable, and you're good to go. You know, an antenna for ABC and CBS and NBC and Fox, and you're good. Um, so you know, you gotta not every not one package is gonna work for everybody. You gotta fine tune it. You gotta pick what you like. Um, and it might take you a little while to figure that out, but the fact that it is so piecemeal lets you make the package that you want. 
that's the way I see it at least. So, um, and it works out. It works out for me. I'm happy with what I what I do. This is uh, just a logistics thing because I've never done it. Suppose I subscribe to Brickbox, and mm -hmm. two months later I just got just I decide I don't want this. How hard is it to disconnect from streaming services? It's really easy. Um, so when you sign up for BritBox or Netflix or anything, you have an account. When you sign up, you create an account with them. Mm -hmm. To cancel, you just go into your account through a web browser or, or through the app, and you just hit go into probably the payment section of the settings, and you hit you know cancel subscription. Mm -hmm. It's that easy. Okay. Um, now I know with Amazon Prime, I pay like a year. I pay yeah. by the year because yeah. it's cheaper that way. So I can't cancel like mid subscription, but I can hit, you know, cancel subscription and then say if it's up in, you know, July, July 31st, it'll let me. So, but it couldn't be easier. It's so okay. much easier than canceling your cables. Mm -hmm. um, most, in most of them, you can do it like in the app on your phone or from a web browser. Um, yeah, it's really easy. It's mm -hmm. easier than getting out of Facebook or something like that too. Like it's really easy. Um, great question. Okay. So, on the front page again, I have listed just the popular ones here. There are so many more. Um, and again, the, the top four here are ones that have live television. So I don't want to, I don't want to confuse those. So there are streaming services that do live TV and there are streaming services like Netflix that have, you know, pre-recorded shows that you can watch on demand essentially. So I don't. I want to keep those two separate. Um, so that that's why I kind of separated it there. Um, now I think I do have prices listed here as well. So this between that front page there, the popular streaming services, and if you do still want live TV, these next few pages might help you pick the right channels. Um, I think you should find something that works for you. Um, Okay, any questions about that? I... Seems like this Fubo TV has a lot of channels. Yeah, yeah. Fubo. And, um, yeah, uh, I don't hear anything about it here on uh, Fubo and me. Fubo, well, it's a streaming service. Um, it's not based out of anywhere, really. Um, I did, I, I wrote down here some of the highlights of the streaming services and who it might be geared towards. So for instance, with Fubo, um, they offer the most channels and they also offer the most sports channels in particular. They kind of, their focus is on sports. So yeah, so if you if you really need like as many sports channels as possible, Fubo is, is the best option. Now some of those sports channels are, might be things you're not interested in like Formula 3 or whatever, but um, there you have it. So. Yeah, there, there's a whole bunch of diff different range there. Um, and you can do all of these in tandem or one or the other. You can try one out for a month. Sometimes they offer free trials. If you don't like it, you know, you don't need it. So it's really, it's you're not signing onto a contract with any of these. It's just month by month payments. Um, with, um, because we would, I'm sorry, someone asking a question? Nope. Um, we live in a pretty uh, metropolitan area. Uh, one of the things I love is that we get like four PBS channels right now mm -hmm. using Verizon Fios. If you go to the alternatives, um, I see that you can get PBS, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get the one out of New Jersey anymore, or? Yeah, um, that's, a good, that's a good point. So PBS is, is funny. Um, I, you'll probably get the one that you're supposed to get. You'll probably get the New York one. Mm -hmm. w, WNYC, is that right? Or is that is the, NPR? Getting confused. There is. It's NEW and LIW. Yeah, I know. I usually I get the one from Connecticut, so it's all over the place. But you'll probably get streaming. You'll probably get the one that you're meant to get in Long Island. So mm -hmm. you'll get the New York one. Unless they offer multiple PBS channels, that I don't think they do on the streaming services. That being said, I know PBS, you can stream from their website. So if you are going the streaming route, you can stream 
21, 13, all their different channels right from their website. So as long as you have internet, you can use that app and get streaming right. for them. Um, okay, so I know I, I've just mentioned like 100 different streaming services, but I want to mention two more that are free. Uh, and you can get them with your Save the Library card. Oh. Uh, so the library offers two streaming services. One is called Canopy, the other is called Hoopla. And they both have apps that you can download on your smartphone, your tablets, your smart TVs, or any of those streaming devices that I talked about. Um, and they're free. What is it, Canopy, Canopy and Hoopla. Canopy. I'll show you right now. So um, Canopy I was able to get on my TV, but not Hoopla. On your, on your smart TV? Yeah, Samsung. Okay, so how old is your smart TV? Um, it's here, I'm trying to think. I, I just was having problems. It's maybe three years old at the most. Okay. Um, I couldn't get either of them on my Samsung. Oh. My Samsung's a couple, probably like six years old. I couldn't yes, get either of them, nice. but they were both available on my streaming device. So that's... Okay. Yeah, so the, the TVs are generally less supported than the streaming devices, so. Well, let me ask you something too. Yeah. I got Peacock. So the, the base of Peacock is free, which is NBC. Mm -hmm. And I could get it on my tablet. I couldn't get it on the TV. And I called them up. I said, why can't I get it on my TV? And they said, Samsung doesn't support it. Yeah. So, yeah, again, I'm, we keep coming back to this. The smart TVs are not as compatible with all these streaming things as the streaming devices are. Well, I thought maybe eventually it would be. Maybe they would, they would do something at their end. I wouldn't the hold out. Yeah. I wouldn't hold out, honestly. Um, yeah, that's why these streaming devices have become so popular, because Samsung and Sony and LG, the people who make the TVs, are focused, more, they're more focused on making the best TV and not on making yeah. mm -hmm. the smartest TV. Um, uh, so yeah, thank you for mentioning that. But um, Canopy and Hoopla, I know are available on any of the streaming devices that I just mentioned. Um, so I'll go into these briefly. Let me see. So Canopy is my favorite. Oh, good, I'm logged in. Um, so can with Canopy, it's movies, TV shows, documentaries. Uh, they have kids shows. Um, that's it. So they really they. Mostly, there's mostly movies and documentaries. Um, oh, they also have the great courses as well. If you're interested, if you've heard of those, they're the great courses. They're long form documentary series. They're all on Canopy. They're all on. So, how do we get Canopy? So, I'm I'm accessing it through a computer right now. But you can download the app. I have it on my phone. I have it on my iPad. If you have a stream, a smart TV, well. Some smart TVs have it on, the, on them, but all streaming devices have it as well. So yeah. like Apple TV, Fire Stick. you get the great Fire courses Stick. on there? Yep. Can you oh out, because they're like $88 and $90 yep, for a streaming device to do this? Anything that connects to the internet, we'll, we'll have it. So like right now, I'm on a laptop and I'm on Canopy. Okay, okay, good. Um, so again, it's free with your library card. Right. Where I have brochures upstairs. I'll grab them for you before you go. Essentially, you just sign in once, you're logged in with your library card, you're good to go. Uh, the caveat is you get 10 views a month. It resets on the beginning of the month. So you can watch 10 movies, 10 documentaries, whatever, a month. Uh, for most people, that's plenty, um, but that's that's the caveat, that's the catch. Um, Hoopla, oh, what cool, so uh, Canopy is nice. Um, the other thing that they specialize in is foreign films, classic films, and indie films. If you're a, fun, a fan of any of those, they have a huge, huge selection. Um, for Canopy. For Canopy. Canopy. Um, so, for instance, um, A24 is a really popular um, movie studio. They did uh, Moonlight. They did... Uh, Oh, a bunch of stuff. Anyways, they're a really popular studio. All their movies go right to Canopy as soon as they're released. So, Canopy's great. Um, okay. The other one is called Hoopla. Let me see if I'm on here. Okay. 
Okay, so Hoopla does everything. They do everything from books, audiobooks, movies, TV shows, comic books, albums. They have everything. Uh, the drawback is because they do a little bit, they do everything but not as much of each. So they don't, they're not specialized in movies the way Canopy is, but they do have hundreds and hundreds of movies. So um, the app looks better than this. So if you're using your TV or something, it'll look better than this. But you know, it, essentially the same thing, you know, you have your movies here, you can play it. And again, this works the same way as Canopy, you get 10 views a month. That's how they keep it free. So I just wanted to point that out. Both of these you get with your library card. Um, and they're, I use Canopy all the time. Hoopla, I, Hoopla generally gets like fewer movies, but they tend to be like newer sometimes. So Hoopla's kind of hit or miss, but you can get some, some gems on here for sure. Uh, Canopy's, I, I like, because I like classic movies and indie movies. So it's personal choice. But I just wanted to point out those two. Those are free with your library card. Now, there are, do I have it written down here? One second. Sorry. There are a bunch of other uh, streaming apps that are free that are supported with commercials. So yeah. you're, you're already used to commercials anyways from watching cable, so this might not be a problem, mm -hmm. but I want to point them out. So, Hoopla and Canopy do not have commercials. Right. So Peacock, you mentioned. Uh, Peacock are NBC shows. Um, the app is free. You can start watching it immediately. Uh, the only drawback is there's a commercial every, you know, when there's a normal commercial break. That's how they support that app. There's two types of people. So some of these are free, and then you can pay to remove the commercials. Um, so so Peacock is NBC shows. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Crackle is another one, and that is, I believe, NBC or Fox. I get them confused. So there's Peacock, Crackle, Pluto, which is uh, owned by Viacom. So you get MTV, VH1, Nickelodeon, Comedy Central, all the Viacom channels for free, ad supported. Um, all three of those I just mentioned have movies as well that have ads. You know, every 20 minutes or so there's an ad that'll pop up, but it's free. Um, and then there's a bunch of others. Uh, Tubi is another one, T-U-B-I. Archive.org is um, through a website only, but all classic or a lot of classic movies are on there to watch for free, no commercials. Um, and then YouTube, of course. If you ever use YouTube, there's tons of stuff on there. And YouTube has started having movies as well, um, ad support. So there are. Uh, what's that? No, YouTube's free. YouTube TV. That's their live TV service. I know it's confusing like with all the pluses and TVs and everything. Uh, so just plain old YouTube.com or the YouTube app on your phone is free. And if you can watch videos, they have now started adding movies as well that you can watch with um, commercials. Okay, uh, let's see. Any questions at all? Just going back in my notes, see what I missed here. I didn't catch the couple of ones yet for Peacock. Okay, uh, yeah, so there's Peacock, Pluto. What is it? Pluto, like the Pluto. former planet, oh, okay. P-L-U-T-O. Um, that's Viacom's alternative to Peacock, so you get all the uh, Viacom shows and channels. Um, Crackle. With a C or a K? A C, C-R-A-C-K-L-E. And then is C already a Q5 or? Uh, I think Crackle is owned by Fox, so you get all the Fox programming. And movies. So some of this would make up for not having the networks. Exactly. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. CBS, I don't think, has a free alternative because they're on Paramount Plus, which is a paid streaming. I don't think ABC does either because ABC is owned by Disney, so they would be part of oh, Disney Plus. Oh, okay. ABC. And what was CBS? Fox. Fox. Okay. 
yes? What was that? Paramount, Paramount. Paramount. Paramount Plus. Who is it with? Paramount, Paramount Plus. Plus. Thank you. PBS. I can put in a plug for one a streaming service that I have, um, Curiosity Stream. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And it's about twenty dollars a year. Yeah. But I, I told my doctor about it. He went. He looked at me. Like, a year? I said, Yeah, a year. What's yeah. it called? What kind of process? It's, it's very good. Curiosity? Curiosity Stream. It's science, history. Mm -hmm. um, oh, well, I think, and now, as you go, like, the, you have the row of things. You go down to the bottom, there's one for children with all kinds of things for kids. What happened was, they ran, at the beginning of the pandemic, they ran a 40% off sale, and I'm like, that's it, I'm buying this. Oh, okay. So then it went from like, I paid $13, it went to $20, just for a year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm calling attention to the table. Yeah. I think it's part of discovery. All right, I know I threw a lot of information at you. Does anyone have any burning questions or want me to go over something again? I'm happy to do it. Oh, you know what? When you had the, um, the big boy, of what, what's it called again? I think it's called the big boy. Big yeah. boy, what's that? Antop. It's a, it's a, you missed that. That was the big boy. That's the antenna. Oh, antenna. So yeah. how high is, how big is that? Uh, it says it's 22 inches in height. So you can put that in your attic? You can put it in your attic, your roof, on a wall, balcony. Oh, here we go. This is a good picture. This is, I was trying to explain this here. Uh, never mind. That's not what you I was You put that against the wall in your house. Mm -hmm. And you can connect all your TVs to that. Yes, you're, you're going to get, you probably need an electrician unless you're savvy with. No. Low voltage wiring in your house. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, essentially, so all of the wires that are run through your house all come from one cord coming that comes from the telephone pole, and then they all spider web, you know, yeah. splinter out or whatever. Um, so what you can do is kind of like rewire it. So instead of it coming from that one source from the telephone pole, you can reroute it to go to your antenna. So now your antenna is feeding all those wires that are going off to all the reaches of your house. Mm -hmm. That would. So if you can do that set up. That's the best of all. Yeah, and this thing, if, you know, I, I believe the patron who was here, I wish he was here today. Uh, he said he got it like, you know, 150 channels with this up on his roof, so yeah. that's you, great. You could put that thing on your roof? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's weatherproof. This isn't the only one. This is like, this is the most expensive one I've seen, but you can get outdoor antennas, you know, they're, the price range is all over the place, but, um, I know Channel Master makes one for about 100, 120 or something, but they're as cheap as forty dollars. Like an antenna, like one of those little antenna things. Right. <laughs> like the yeah, these old yeah. old school. So yeah. as long as it's, I mean, they might look like the old antennas that you're used that you've seen before, but um, as long as it's a, a digital antenna, it will pick up all the new digital airwaves. So yeah. it'll work. This is the way to go. They also look kind of more wind resistant to that. Yeah, 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 you're right. That's true. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, there's hundreds of antennas out there. Do I you wish have an I. Antenna? I don't. I, I just do just, just do it. streaming. Yeah. Um, but I had an antenna back when I lived in Rhode Island, and I got about 50 channels with just a basic indoor one, like the one you stick in a window. Oh, right. And that had about a 50 mile range, I think. So I was picking up, you know, Rhode Island small. I was probably covering all of Rhode Island. <laughs> What's that? You put it on the inside? Yeah, that's the indoor ones are meant to go on the inside of a window. Yeah. Yeah, so let me see. I think I showed you one earlier. But. So if you do the numbers, if you put a digital antenna in the front of your table and you know the wires of digital streaming is like how much money are you going to save in the end? So I, I don't think you were here in the beginning of the class, but I said I only pay for internet, inter like internet only. And I think it's around like $35 a month for like 200 megabytes, 300 megabytes, right around there. Um, and then, so that's it for cable. And then I subscribe to a few streaming services, maybe like two or three, depending on the time of the year. I know my wife subscribes to, uh, I think it's called Friendly TV. It's like the Hallmark channels for streaming around probably already started. But um, so it's probably, probably in like under $60 altogether. Yeah. Um, you had talked about um, canopy. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you could get the great courses on that? Yep. You mean the courses that I already bought for like $80? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Probably. Art uh, the art courses and the science courses. And yeah. So wow. let me see. There I'm used to be. Because I get that catalog thing. I mean, it's in that catalog that's oh, supposed to be. They used to have just like a separate, I'm probably just not seeing it. Is that for arts? Like it used to have its own category for that. I'm checking it out. Yeah, what was a, maybe I can find a great courses or search great courses. Yeah, it, episode 11 of Native People. Yeah, that's probably, these are probably just all courses. Here we go. So I went to suppliers, the great courses. So these are all the great courses. If you had one, I, I wish I could find it through the browse here, but in any case, these are all great courses here, like episode 18 of Cooking Basics, episode 25 of the History of the United States, episode 20 of Understanding Russia. So. They're here. Oh, that's okay. Can you pay for them? No, this is free. This is free. Oh, but she paid for them. Yeah, she was yeah. paying for the food. Yeah, they paid a lot of money for the science ones. But you can only do 10 a month with this. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, we don't, I, I don't know if anybody spends that much time on the TV. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so I know I threw tons of information at you. Uh, let me it's just going back over your notes to see if I didn't miss anything crucial. I think it's worthwhile to cut the cord. So if an, if you are interested in the in doing an antenna, you know, try it before you Cut the cord. Yeah. Um, if you are happy with the antenna, great. Um, and then I would recommend either talking to your cable company about seeing if you can just buy out their router um, modem combo or just the modem. Um, if they don't buy, if they if they are separate, not a combo, don't buy their router because it's junk. Just just buy the modem. That's that's the essential bit that you need. The modem technology only updates every like eight years. It's not essential. The router technology is what's really important because that is what gives you signal throughout your house. So I would recommend buying a modem if from your cable company or on your own. You can get them from Best Buy, you can get them from Amazon, wherever. It's a one-time purchase. It should last you for a decade. Uh, and then you're out getting a good router. So that's what will give you the Wi-Fi coverage that will make sure that all of your smart devices in your house can all stream without any hiccups. And that's it. And then, then you can start shopping around with the streaming devices or the streaming services. You know, you can try them for a month with a free trial. If you like it, you can keep it. If you get sick of it, you realize you're not using it, you can cancel it. It's all really easy. You don't have to talk to anybody. You can just click a button, it's done. Yeah. So one more question on all the antennas. Do they get picked like the public services like ABC, ABC, and Fox, or they pick like uh, HBO? It's only going to be the public channels. So you'll get the local channels, ABC, and CBS, talk, NBC. Uh, yeah. You won't get those long Oh, no. Oh, okay. It's part of cable. Oh, okay. But um, did you get one of these handouts? Yes, yes. Okay. So I don't know about News 12, but there are some like lots of uh, channels like that on this list. So you might find a streaming service that, that covers it. Um, if you want to dip your toes into any of these live streaming services, like live to live TV, I recommend Sling is a good one to start with. Um, it's the cheapest, it's like $25 a month, and they give you like 30 live channels. They have two different packages, a Sling Blue and a Sling Orange. Um, they both offer different channels. Yeah, but I think um, you're right. There are actually two for 
need to go now to okay. get the yeah. 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 The color like and everybody's house. I think uh, sling's a good one to dip your toes in. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you can cancel these at any time, so you're not like locked in. Right. I recommend sling to dip your toes in because um, it's, well, one, it's the cheapest. It has the fewest amount of channels, but they're generally like they cover most of the ones that people want, like Fox News and mm -hmm. CNN and ABC, CBS, stuff like that. So it covers, you know, the general ones, the things that people want the most. It's $25 a month. And they usually run a promotion where when you sign up, they'll give you a Roku stick <laughs> or, an, or an antenna yeah. with it. So that's, they're a good one to start with. Um, just for that reason alone, you know, you get a free Roku or you get a free antenna just by signing up. Yeah. And uh, that could be your whole thing, your whole package right there. So Sling's a good one to start with. Um, I took the Sling a few years ago, and they could, they were not. It was you needed to do Roku. They didn't work with the smart TVs. So they've come a long way. Yeah. They they work with just about everything now. Yeah. I'm gonna give um, it a shot. So they're good. If you, I'm a Google nut, so if like I had an extra 70, 60, whatever it is, $50 a month, I'd get YouTube TV because it has the most channels and unlimited DVR and it has all the fun features. But again, you can pick and choose, use this chart to see like what your essential channels are that you absolutely need and then go from there. Yeah, Roku a streaming device? Roku is, is a streaming device you plug into your TV. That's what that's what all these services come into so you can watch them. No, it's a one-time purchase. Did you have a preference for the orange or the blue? I had, it's been a little while since I've looked at them. It depends on what channels they get. But that's it, that, that is if you want to skip the antenna, right? Because if you get the antenna, you might get some, some channels that you already... Yeah, the antenna is going to give you the major networks, right, and PBS. Uh, the Sling gives you those and then a few uh, like regular cha cable channels. So you might get like CNN, Comedy Central, MSNBC, things like that. Right. You're not going to get MSNBC through an antenna. And that receives TVs and apps that you go in your Yes. Just like Netflix. Yep. The, the, those work. The, the live TV streaming apps, the ones where you can watch live TV as if you had a cable box, they work. You, you get into them the same way you would any other streaming app, like Netflix or Amazon Prime or anything. You open it up and instead of seeing you know, the Netflix display, if you have Netflix, you know, it has like a bunch of recommendations for you. Instead of seeing that, you'll see the channel guide that you're used to seeing. And then you can kind of go through the channels, pick one and you're jumping into the live TV. The only difference is it's coming from the internet and not coming from... You mentioned Walmart, my, my wife is Walmart. Not Friendly TV. <laughs> It's like five dollars a month, and it gives you like six Hallmark channels. It's crazy. Yeah. Your wife will be very happy. <laughs> no commercials. They have a law commercial. I know. That's friendly. F R N D L Y. It's friendly, but I think it doesn't have an I. It's like F R N D L Y. Yeah. I think I might have it written down here. Acorn TV and BritBox, you mentioned here earlier, those are all the BBC and ITV shows. So if you're a British TV nut, those are a great options. All right, I have 15 minutes left. Does anyone want to talk about anything else? Streaming services they want to recommend? Devices, how to hook up internet? Well, I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is. There's so many channels. Um, do you, what is the uh, what's the channel? What's it? What is it? Sorry. Did you already? Did you look on this list? Nothing. What is it called? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what you were saying. TBN, Trinity Broadcast. TBN? How much is your cable bill long? Well, it's still on a pay basis. Two minutes, yeah. Oh, that's two, 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 two. No, it's a TBN. It's called the 10 TBN. It's like 175. They have an app. They have an app? They have an app. It has two TVs on it. 
It's free. Eleven channels for free, right there. So there are more streaming apps than I could possibly ever memorize. So if you're curious about something, just do a Google search. Search. Maybe you'll get lucky. Yeah. It's amazing. Everything's online now. You can get anything online. All right. Any other questions at all? One more. I have a one more. I have one more. I just think that I'm trying to take advantage of it. I know this. You go to the but like CBS, now they have Paramount Plus. But now Paramount Plus is only by stream, and not regular channel. Paramount Plus is a streaming app, yes. What is CBS like? The point is, I watch SEAL Team. They had a month, four episodes of SEAL Team, and now it's gone, but it's on Paramount Plus. So the network make money on selling it to Paramount Plus? Well, they I mean, I don't their, understand why they yeah. take it off Channel 2, and now I can't get what I would like to do last month. Oh, you can't get SEAL because Team. Because they, they don't have SEAL Team. It's only on Paramount Plus now. Because they own, CBS owns both of them. Right. So, right. so they, I was watching so they make money too. from Cablevision or Fios by going through them, but if they split it off and they say, oh, you can only get this show on Paramount Plus, mm -hmm. now they have another way to strip, to get money. Oh, so they're getting greedy. Or they're Correct. Uh, they're, they're trying to keep their foot in with streaming because they're going to lose. People leave TV all the time. What a shame that would be. Optimum, it keeps pushing for four ninety nine a month. This Discovery, is that a streaming kind of thing? Discovery Plus? Yes. Yes. Discovery yes. Plus. So Discovery Plus is another streaming service, just like all the other ones I mentioned, mm -hmm. but it has the Discovery, yeah. everything that's under the Discovery umbrella company. So I think Discovery ows Nat Geo, Nat Geo, yeah. the Smithsonian Channel, the History Channel, the History Channel, yeah. probably something about Alien, yeah. I don't know, all kinds of stuff. So Discovery Plus would give you all those channels. That being said, I know HBO just bought Discovery Plus, so event, so within the couple, next couple of months, Discovery Plus is going to get absorbed into HBO Max. So, oh, that's so maybe you might want to get HBO because it's going to give you, it's going to give you Discovery. Yeah, that's interesting. So yeah, it, it, the, the days are past when Netflix was king. Now every, now everyone is, you know, it's a real competition. I mean, this is pushing out. The, the cable vision and BIOS, this, they're going to eventually go away. Well, until they start getting more competitive with their pricing. Yeah. That's what, yeah. Who knows what will happen? Maybe they'll just beam it into our brains. We won't have to worry about any of this stuff. <laughs> just put a chip in and Yeah. <laughs> Well, I hope everyone got something from the class. If you have any questions, again, Alex, you know where to find me. I'm here. I'm chained to the desk. This was very, very good. Happy to help. Yes. Once I figure out that. Yeah, I'm going to be back. 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 I'm going to be back